Hello, good afternoon and welcome to Midday Live with me, AC Benewa Otu. Let's look at our top stories upcoming in the next one hour. And former Western Regional Director of the National Vocational Training Institute, NVITU, shot dead by armed robbers in his residence. In other top stories, Head of addictive disease at Kolibu Teaching Hospital cautions government not to bow to any pressure to decriminalize marijuana use in the country. And in international news, at least 57 people killed and 65 injured in a fuel tanker explosion in Tanzania. Details of these, including sports and entertainment, all coming up. Let's do our very first story now. And the former Western Regional Director of the National Vocational and Technical Institute, NVTI, Donatus Kuma, has been shot dead by armed robbers. Uh, the stone at his residence at Enicha, Queen of Peace, in the second day, Takradi metropolis of the Western Region. According to the stepson of the deceased, Theophilus Cromwell Tony, at about 3 a.m. Saturday dawn, he heard a gun shot from his father's room. He met his father staggering out of his room uh, with blood oozing from his chest. Theophilus Cromwell Tony said he quickly raised an alarm and uh, a co-tenant came to help the father into his car. Fortunately, he died on the way to the hospital. Before the attack on the house uh, of the deceased, two robbers had carried out a similar operation on two separate houses in the same neighborhood. Now, according to the first victim, 29-year-old uh, Adelaide Parker, at about 2 a.m., she was uh, walking by a gun pointing uh, uh, to her to her head. Uh, he warned her not to shout uh, or she will be killed and demanded uh, for money and other valuables. The robbers collected her Samsung A8 uh, Plus, Samsung J7 Pro, uh, Samsung JT5 and close to 400 cities. Uh, our correspondent in the region uh, is following up on this and will update us in our subsequent bulletins. In other news, security analyst Colonel uh, Festo Saboaji retired says the police has failed in the way and manner they have handled issues surrounding the Takrade kidnapping. Speaking on the key points, he was worried the Western Regional Police Headquarters could not deploy expertise to personally tackle the issue. The police should set the professional agenda and not allow the media to hijack the course and the direction of the investigation. And they failed. In fact, they have failed at different junctures to, to do that. First of all, in terms of uh, relations with the family, they had told us that they were liaising, they were in contact with the family. It turned out to be false. Even when the liaison officers were introduced to the families, the families came back and said that. We still haven't seen them. They don't visit us. So that's one. Now, to allow a prisoner or a detainee to escape from the detention facility is a very serious offense. Till today, the police has not told us how they have dealt with those um, individuals who might be involved. Because yeah. this gentleman, what's his name? Samuel, Samuel. Wells told us that. There was an accomplice yes. from the police or from, from that uh, yeah. office. That's one side. Now, all the indications that we're discussing now, that this thing didn't happen at uh, Tuyabodong. It happened right at the regional capital, where you expect that even if the police didn't have capacity and expertise at the regional headquarters, they should have some semblance of a detective team. If we're being told that at Takradi, a regional capital, and Takradi, or Western region it's for that mean, matter, the new yeah. Western yeah. region, again, is not like other regions. It's been there, you know, uh, for, for a very long time as a metropolis. The police has not been able to deploy the expertise, the skills, and to the extent that they even had to go and look for machetes or cutlasses and pickaxes. 
it tells you that beyond capacity, planning was yeah. also insufficient. Because yeah. if you could arrange for the prison service to bring you Some a septic teacher. tank, whatever MTR, it is, they say. Yeah. why couldn't you sit around the table and say, when we get to the house, what it, is it that we're going to need? To the energy sector now, an energy expert, Kwame Jantua, has warned issues confronting the energy sector could bring Ghana to a halt if not properly managed. Speaking on the key points, he noted if Ghana has to use all revenue from crude oil to settle debts in the sector, that ought to be done. The energy sector can bring this country to a halt, mm -hmm. full stop. And so, Abna, I feel it's not politics. It's not politics. The government should try as much as possible to bring everybody around the table. Look, we have parliament. Have they been able to solve it? We have the executives. Have they been able to solve it? We have the different operating uh, 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 institutions. Have they been able to sort it? We've sat here on the media and <laughs> talked about it. Have we been able to sort it? And it is a cancer that can now kill the country. So what's the way forward? Let's put everything aside and let's sit down. And if we say, and I keep saying this, and I, I don't know. But sit down to what, to, to what end? I mean, know, if you sit, sit down, down, you agree on things, and then you backtrack. You don't do the things you need to do at all. We need to stick to it. We need to stick to it. Government owes a lot of money to ECG, stroke PDS. Mm. What are we doing about that? And, and I, I say, if we have to use all our oil revenue to sort this out, let's do it. Why? Look, sitting here right now, if these lights go off, is there a program? Parliament, when they are sitting, lights go out, is there a program? If we then want to go the Nigerian way, where because of inefficiency in the electricity sector, we bring in generators, does that not affect fuel? So it's a vicious cycle. So we need to sit down and discuss this thing thoroughly. Now, Information Minister Kojo Pon and Kroma has described as illogical claims that some government officials were conspiring to take a national asset in the PDS concession deal. He says government would not have called for a full-scale inquiry into the matter if there were intentions to take a public asset as part of a contract. Addressing a press briefing in Kumasi, he reiterated government's commitment to prioritize Ghana's interests in the PDS deal. He called on Ghanaians to shun those claims since they are attempts by political opponents to tag the government of wrongdoing. This is a $3 billion national asset that we are giving on a concession to a third party to assist ECG to manage. And if we find anything that raises red flags. It will be irresponsible on the part of the administration just to sit back and say it's business as usual. Government wants to reiterate its commitment to ensuring that the people of Ghana are best served in the ongoing inquiry into the PDS concession agreement. Kojo Point Koma also described as untrue, media freedom is being subdued by the current administration. He says the government will continue to roll out interventions to support freedom of expression and media practice in the country. To health now, and head of addictive disease at the Kolibu Teaching Hospital, Logosu Amegashi, has cautioned government not to bow to any pressure to decriminalize marijuana use in the country. Speaking to TV3, uh, he argued that it will create the rate of drug addiction in the country. Statistics from the Behavioral Health Statistics and Quality shows drug use among young people between the ages of 12 and 17 is on the rise. Currently, about 70% of the inmates at the psychiatric hospitals in Ghana fall within this age bracket. The narcotic blood control statistics also show that the youth from junior and senior high schools and tertiary institutions make up the majority. Despite all this, the campaign to get marijuana legalized is gradually gaining momentum as many Ghanaians and foreigners are mounting pressure on government. 
head of addictive disease unit at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital, Logo Suamegashi, believe government will regret if it bows to the pressure. We are aware of the statistics in the psychiatric hospitals and the authorities there tell us about cannabis-induced psychosis. Are they saying that our nurses and doctors who have worked over the years in these institutions and have seen cases visit, go and come, they come to treatment, they don't have access to cannabis, and they are stable, they go back to their environments, go back to their workplaces, and they're performing very well until they touch the cannabis. Liver failure, stroke, mental confusion, brain damage, lung disease, and memory problems are some of the adverse effects of drug abuse. Logo Swamegashi observed that the institutions that would deal with these complications are not there. If there is a way that these other ones could are not like marijuana, it's not criminalized. None of us is saying that people using substances should be criminal. We are just cautioning that the institutions that will deal with the complications are not in place for now. He indicated that there's no economic benefit in substance sale as portrayed by many. What are the damages that are done to the environments of mining areas? And what are the compensations of those people? But in this particular case, whether the cost of trading in marijuana or cannabis will be 10 times more than all the mineral resources of this country put together. Are we looking at the collateral damage? How much would be 1 billion Ghana cities if I lost my son in medical to school marijuana who is got psychotic and is irreversible? Let's do other stories now and calls have intensified for African governments to invest more into adopting sustainable and strategic measures to, on climate change in the sub-region. The ECOWAS Commission has challenged African governments to invest more in adopting sustainable and strategic measures on climate change in the sub-region for agriculture, environment and resources. His Excellency Seko Sangari believes until uh, member countries synergize gains made in the climate change agenda, the challenge will persist. Climate change is one of the fundamental threats to global development and to the chances of ending poverty. The risk it causes to Africa's development calls for sustained responsive action and adequate financing to carry out interventions. On the steps Ghana is taking to deal with climate change, the Deputy Minister of Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation, Patricia Piede, said while it is essential to partner sister countries in the fight, little changes in individual countries can contribute significantly to the collective efforts. It's been done uh, as a region. If I talk about, about the region, I'm talking about the West Africa region is to ensure that we have facilities that can build capacities, it can research into uh, the right technologies to be deployed for, to address climate issues, and also to seek for the right funding, pool funding together to address these issues. The ECOWAS Commissioner for Agriculture, Environment and Resources in his speech read on his behalf encourage member countries to synergize gains in the climate change agenda to remain competitive. This meeting provides an opportunity to commend the 10 founding member states for their foresight and leadership, and most importantly, the Federal Republic of Germany, the main driving force behind the establishment of this young institution was called. The West African Science of its Center on Climate Change and Adapted Land Use, WASCAL, held a third West African Ministerial Council meeting in Ghana since its inception in 2010. The essence of this year's meeting was to showcase strategies by policymakers at ensuring a sustainable fight against the climate change challenge in the sub region. And participants at this year's National Adolescent Health Ambassadors Camp have been urged to come up with solutions to address challenges confronting adolescents. At the end of the event, the health ambassadors are expected to impact their peers in their various regions.
more than 600 participants drawn from the region are attending the third edition of the three-day event. The program, among other things, seeks to enable ambassadors to pitch and compete for grants for their small-scale health promotion projects. The ambassadors will discuss health issues and address myths and misconceptions regarding adolescent health and most importantly explore their roles in achieving the sustainable development goals. The Director of Family Health Division of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Patrick Abwaji, noted that healthy and empowered adolescents are key assets to impact their families and the nation. It is expected that this year's camp will contribute to the holistic development of the contemporary adolescent and participants will consequently initiate engagement which will lead to positive health changes wherever they find themselves. We encourage all to participate with enthusiasm and initiate intellectually stimulating discourse which will leave lasting impressions on what we need to do to improve our health as young people and how we need to support positive changes as stakeholders and as members of this country. Speaking on the theme Equipping Health Ambassadors for Sustainable Development, Country Representative of UNFPA, Niyi Ojolape, urged the health ambassadors to take their camp seriously to impact their peers in the various schools, especially on the SDGs. This health ambassador's camp is to teach you what you need to know and what you need to take forward to go and talk to your mates, to go and talk to your peers from all the regions in the country so that we we'll prevent teenage pregnancy wherever they are. This health ambassador's camp will give you all the formula you need, all the uh, safe, effective and meaningful engagement that will enable you to achieve that particular goal. The health ambassadors are confident the training would enable them impact positively on the lives of their peers. So we have clubs in our various schools, so each, for each club meeting or the session, we are going to speak about the things that we learn here. We are going to have discussions amongst ourselves so that we can share the knowledge and then also teach our peers like what we've learned so that they can also like, impart it into their lives. The Health Minister Kweko Ajiman Menu has cautioned herbalists against depleting the forest of heritage plants required for their work, but rather cultivate them for posterity. He made the observation when he inaugurated the traditional medicine practice council here in Accra. According to the World Health Organization, 70% of Ghana's population depend exclusively on traditional medicine for their health care. The country has an estimated 100,000 traditional medicine practitioners, including spiritual healers across the country, out of which 4,000 are registered. The activities have, however, come under strong criticisms in recent times over violations in the standards of the practice. The health minister, Kweku Ajiman Menu, is hopeful the council will assist the ministry to promote and regulate practitioners. Holding the office of the member of the Traditional Medicine Practice Council Board. Holding the office of the member of the Traditional Medicine Practice Council Board. A champion is going away. A new leaf is coming out. They call it Atadri Milk. So consciously, plant medicine, you have farms for these things. Are we encouraging the herbalists who are coming out with degrees? Some to go into the bush and begin to grow. Right, Mahogany is getting lost from our forests. Registrar for the council, Togwi Yaka IV, spoke about how the council plans to execute its mandate. We intend to, if you like, uplift the standard of practice from the indigeneity and so the regulation is going to be aimed at people who are genuinely coming into business or to do commercial herbal medicine practice or trade. The council is to assess the ministry develop the traditional and alternative medicine bill. 
while still staying on health. The country could experience a crisis as the National Blood Service is running out of stock. A senior blood donor recruiter, Joyce Opon Edu, uh, who made this known, when uh, said the National Centre is currently unable to meet half of the daily requirement of up to 200 units by the Kolibu Teaching Hospital in Accra. The National Blood Service supplies the Kolibu Teaching Hospital between 150 and 200 units of blood each day. Daily requirements from other hospitals and health facilities nationwide goes beyond 300 units. However, current blood stock level at the blood service showed less than half of daily requirements of the Kolibu Teaching Hospital. The current situation at the blood bank right now is that we don't have enough blood and it's a bit worse now. The reality is that Ghanaians are not willing to donate blood voluntarily in spite of years of public campaigns and sensitizations. A senior blood donor recruiter at the National Blood Service, Joyce Opongedu, blamed the development of myths, misconception and mindset of Ghanaians. There are some misconceptions that people have. We should know that blood donation is a safe process. There are also benefits of the blood donation. You have frequent check of your health and then you also have fresh production of blood in you when you donate and you get a donor card or a certificate that shows that you're a donor. And if you don't know your blood group, you also get to know your blood group through the blood donation. She used the 27th Annual Evangelical Presbyterian Church Christian Youth Builders Blood Donations at Mimpalsem near Legon, Accra, to call for public reawakening. We need just 1% of the Ghanaian population to donate blood to overcome this shortage of blood. You know you can donate every four months, that's let's say three times in a year. But if everyone would donate at least once in a year. The exercise on the theme Save a Life was targeted to mobilize at least 250 units of blood. The West Volta Presbytery of the EP Church, Cynthia MFA Asigbeche, urged the public to donate regularly to save lives. If there is no blood, there is a lot of challenges. Ghana should take the blood donation as something to save life. Like how we've done today, maybe it should be like three, four groups or churches or corporate bodies should also donate the same day. Other than that, we can't meet the target. Local tomato farmers have attributed their inability to meet local demand to poor rainfall pattern, lack of ready market during the peak season, and inadequate short, uh, storage facility. They are requesting support from government to enable them to maximize their yield and to increase productivity. Here is a report by Emanuela Arthur and Antoinette. Most tomato farmers are unable to cultivate all year round, leaving room for imports to bridge the gap. According to the Ghana National Tomato Traders and Transporters Association, an average of 99.5 million US dollars worth of tomatoes is imported from Burkina Faso into Ghana every year. The Wager Irrigation Project is a horticultural project at Tuba near Kokobite, established some 35 years ago to promote vegetable production. Farmers at the site cultivate tomatoes and the like for the local market. Project manager Samuel Evans Lamte says June to October are the major growing seasons because of the nature of the country's soil. You can't get tomatoes all year round in Ghana because we don't have varieties that can uh, withstand the high night temperatures. According to him, post-harvest losses threaten the ability of farmers to meet local demand. Since we don't have storage facilities, we don't have proper pack houses and those uh, facilities, we still have losses here. Sometimes for tomato especially, they will ripen and then if the, the, the buyers are not coming, they rot. Treasurer of the Wage Irrigation Water Users Association and a farmer, Daniel Otu, spoke about some challenges they face in cultivating the vegetable. The problem is that the pumps need irrigation and electricity bill. Our major problems are the irrigation pumps which are not working, the high electricity bills and the cattle that destroy our crops at night when we are away. 
Some traders are the Agbogulushi market in Accra, out of the view, the construction of dams in the regions will boost production. During those times when Ghana had some dams, our tomato farmers were able to produce more tomatoes, and so we were not importing tomatoes from Burkina Faso. So if the president is able to fulfill his promise of building more dams, we will not import from Burkina Faso again. Another source of worry is high exchange rates. Bokina ni edi sefa neto. Sefa na time suba kose sane kosro. At Bokina Faso, we buy the tomatoes with sefa, which is higher than our currency. Therefore, we incur losses most of the time. We also spend so much on transport, and the police extort monies from us. The farmers want government to step up plans to enable value addition to ensure that farmers derive the maximum benefit from their crop yield. Well, also, the kidnapping of the three girls in Takradi has taken a new twist in the last two weeks following the discovery of skeletons near a location where the prime suspect, Samuel Wilkes, uh, was rearrested. Kwache Afre Nyama focuses on that in our story of the week. If the police claim they found human remains and that could possibly be the remains of our lovely girls, what becomes of the statement by the CID boss, the National Security Minister, and the Interior Minister that the girls are alive and safe? That was family of the three kidnapped girls addressing a news conference in Accra on Tuesday. This was days after a security operation at Casarodo, a suburb in the western regional capital, Takrade, led to the discovery of human skeletons suspected to be that of the missing girls. The family said they were never kept in the known. Can the police tell us they made no search initially when Samuel Wills was arrested? We will again want to ask, who would testify that the said remains were exhumed from the said septic tank since all civilians were driven away from the scene? They also requested for an independent forensic investigation. We are asking why the police keep distorting information concerning the whereabouts of our girls. We are... That's asking for an independent body to run a forensic test. The police, which would later retrieve a fourth set of skeletons, had earlier announced that it would require four weeks to conclude DNA tests. The Criminal Investigations Department subsequently invited a pathologist from the Confanochi Teaching Hospital to examine the human remains found in Takrade, believed to be linked to the three kidnapped girls. Part of the investigations would be to ascertain the gender and age of the remains. On Thursday, father of one of the three kidnapped girls, Prisla Crunchy, made a U-turn indicating he would submit to a DNA test to determine whether the human remains found at the residence of Samuel Wells is that of his daughter. Alexander Crunchy had earlier said he would not do the test after the Western Regional Police Commander, DCOP Vincent Redima Dejo, visited the family to report of the discovery of the human remains. He explained to our Western Regional correspondent, Erica J, why he changed his mind. So many people have expressed their opinion that we should avail ourselves so that the work can go on. Even Mr. Bright Apia, who is child right inter international activist. He also spoke that though they all said with this that initially things didn't go on as well as we wished but we shouldn't dwell too much on that. Two clinical psychologists later met with the families of the three girls. They had one mission to offer words of encouragement to them. We came and then have a, a discussion with this just to encourage us to maintain or to help us pass through all what we are going through. Civil society group Child Rights International has in the meantime called on the affected families to remain calm as the entire country awaits the outcome of the DNA tests. We take a break here. News returns shortly with more. Stay with us.
Let's do business now. And we will begin prosecution of persons involved in the collapse of the banks that were collapsed for corrupt practices. This is according to Governor of the Bank of Ghana. Speaking exclusively to my colleague, Ekton Namse, he assured that the judicial process should be completed before December this year process is what is really a problem for many. We haven't seen people whose names have come out. I think you should give them some time. Mm. I think you should give them some time. I know they are working hard at it and hopefully before the year end we'll see some of these cases. And, and so this case is with the courts now or it hasn't gone to the court yet? I know that there are some preparations towards that. That the people involved will be prosecuted as I know a deterrent that, to those... I know who, that there are some processes uh, towards that. So let's wait and see what happens. By the end of the year, By we should see something. Meanwhile, the governor has explained that the financial system had reached a tipping point and it could have uh, assumed business as usual. We had a few of these banks, their licenses revoked. We've had a lot of back and forth. People have lost their jobs. We had managers who were taking their gross, where it was about 15,000. They were taking 2,000 because they had to be taken on by another bank. Managers becoming tellers and cashiers. Do you think maybe we rushed the process? No, I don't think that we rushed the process. I think if we had not taken those decisions, you would have seen queues at our banks. I'm sure you saw the events in the Midland Savings and Loans, which right. was all over the country. Mm. Imagine that happening across these nine banks with customers queued up at the banking halls, struggling to get their money. This mm. is what we have averted, because mm -hmm. this is the sort of crisis that occurs where banks are not liquid, where the banks are not able to meet depository drawouts, you all end up queuing outside their banking halls and the chaos that comes with it. Mm -hmm. I think that by taking these decisions, we have been able to save depositors' funds. If you look at the number of depositors that have been uh, protected, there are over a billion depositors' funds in the banking system. You also have over 1.5 million depositors in the microfinance sector. Yes. You look at the number of staff that have been absorbed by Consolidated Bank. We have over 3,000 of these staff that are working at Consolidated Bank. These are people who could have lost their jobs if we had not intervened and we had allowed the system to collapse. So you have to look at it positively. Mm. In other business news, Blue Skies outsource most of its fruits for production because Ghanaian farmers cannot meet the raw material demand of the company. At the, uh, of the average of 40 tons of fruit exported daily, Ghana can only supply 30%. The situation may be worsening in the near future as most mango farmers are being attacked by the Black uh, Bacteria Syndrome, BBS. Blue Skies was established in 1997 by British entrepreneur Anthony Powell to produce fresh cut fruits and freshly squeezed juices. Pineapple supply from Ghanaian farmers is inadequate. Many of the farms collapsed after the farmers were compelled by government to begin producing a particular strand of pineapple when they did not have the know-how. Most of the crops failed and the farmers ran into bankruptcy. Anthony Powell explains Blue Skies procures 70% of its raw materials from other countries because Ghanaian farmers are unable to supply the needed fresh fruits. Try and stimulate um, the agricultural activity here, which is woefully lacking at the moment. The, the agriculture is on its knees. In fact, I think it's lying face down in the dirt. Um, we are desperate to try and get things going here. I'll give you an example. Uh, we have just uh, 20 or so farmers that do pineapples. If you go out there now, where are the pineapples coming from? Not from Ghana. We're importing them from Benin and Ivory Coast and other exactly. people which are producing. Why aren't the farmers here doing it? So we're doing our bit with Alistair's help with the school farm project. The company is setting up factories close to their raw material sources. We have a three factory complex here in Swan, but we also have a pack house in Senegal. 
pack house in Ivory Coast and uh, we're busy building a factory in Benin. So it's a huge uh, complex, just West Africa. Yeah. For South Africa, where we have also activity. North for Egypt, where we have activity. Yeah. North for Brazil, where we have also uh, a factory. North Blue Skies fears the local supply of mangoes will decline in the next five years. This is attributed to invasion of the Black Bacteria Syndrome, BBS, which hampers the supply of mangoes to the factory and threatens the survival of Ghana's mango industry. Only 5% of Blue Sky's products are sold on the local market. The company provides a ready market for fruits grown in Ghana, but the country is not taking advantage of it. The Planting for Export and Rural Development, Planting for Food and Jobs, One Village, One Dam, and One District, One Factory policies need to be integrated to ensure adequate supply of raw materials to feed the country's factories. And music lovers in Kumasi are braced up for today's music music event to be held at the Heroes Park. They expect to be served with nothing but the best of performances from the Athis. Our reporter Ibrahim Abubakar has been gauging the mood and ahead of the event. If you are a hip life, high life or gospel music lover and you stay in and around Kumasi, Saturday evening, the place to be will be the Heroes Park. TV3 is bringing its entertainment program, Music Music, at the doorstep of residents of Kumasi. This is part of our triple launch of Akuma FM, Onya TV, and Ghana is Most Beautiful. Let's find out from residents what their expectations are. Well, it has been a while that Music Music has been in Kumasi, and uh, coming back to Kumasi once again is going to be mega, and it's going to be wonderful because we, we have we have tasted for music music in kumasi for so long so as they are coming nothing but the best and we wish them we will be there life and call it but what are your expectations um, i'm expecting something big from our kumasi people especially flo kingston and the rest so we are expecting something big that's all like we're watching life okay music music i've been watching music, music for a while like in Accra. i've not been there before so it's coming to Kumasi is a big privilege for us people in Kumasi. And the artists too, we have a young artist like um, Yaya Jackson, Floating Stone. And I'll be coming there purposely to wear Yaya Jackson because I'm a big fan of her. So, missing music coming to Kumasi is a privilege for us people living in Kumasi. So, I'm going to be there because I'm sure it's going to be big. Yes. Big. For me, I'll be expecting more from um, the likes of Yaya Jackson and Floating Stone and the rest because I think they have the talent and we as uh, we here in Kumasi too, we have to show the other world that we got the talent here. So I'll be, let me say, Kumasi people that I'll, I'll be telling Kumasi people that they should make it to the Heroes Park. Yeah, come in their numbers. We're going to chill and have fun. So you're saying we are buying an idea, we say come near one. And the mess mess we say will be amra because always now now you complain. You say be be a quackra. Oh, but this time the other we say come near. Come here, Professor, be amra. Now you bounce away and comfort your home. Nyanya discipline. Na ya nya din boni bia o kumasi. Go bi bia ye blame se kumasi kumasi for no. Ye ye to travel ye ye say. Once eh ya di mo ya ya nko for at at se o kumasi be ende. Ye best stress o bia amra. No mo ban so ye nko comfort ye ho na bi bia nya for. The expectations are huge and people are excited that for the first time in a very long time music music is coming to their doorsteps. Like I said, if you live in and around Kumasi, you can't be left out of tomorrow's event. It is like Flo Kingstone, Strongman, Yaa Jackson, and Empress Gifty, among other artists, will be performing tomorrow. Ibrahim Abubakar, TV3, Kumasi. Well, if you live in Kumasi, you just can't miss this program. And ahead of the launch of a, a Ghana's Most Beautiful, let's see uh, what the ladies are doing regarding the launch. Here at the Centre for National Culture in Kumasi, these contestants prepare to put up their very best on Sunday. 16 contestants an expansion in terms of representation and a fair representation of all 16 regions. Sunday's event 
is suspected to be a blend of culture and intellect, and these contestants are being groomed on that line by their trainers. <laughs> For Sewa, who is representing the Ashanti region and the launch host, it is the beginning of the bigger challenge. I'm really prepared. I can say I am super prepared. I'm not going to joke over there. It's the host region and I need to put up my very best, the best of best. I'm not going to disappoint a sentiment in Ghana as a whole. Prince Dake. Project coordinator says all is set to ensure a smooth event. The organizational front, we are very ready to invade Ashanti region because the reason for bringing Ghana's most beautiful launch here is to project the, the rich culture of the Ashanti people, but also to take the ability to help the young ones to know the real divisions that have come by way of uh, governmental policies. And so we are going to project a different side of those regions for people to see in this year's Ghana's Most Beautiful. The public perhaps will be expecting something more than what they witnessed in 2011 when the region first hosted the program. The big stage will be set on Sunday, August 11, at the Heroes Park in Kumasi at 2 p.m. <laughs> Well, so you definitely can't miss these events. Wherever you are, you have to quickly rush to Kumasi. Get to the transport stations and get to Kumasi to witness these events. And that's all it news for this afternoon with me, AC Benewa Otu. Thanks so much for watching. Enjoy the day.